Welcome to the operator's training of the Elgin Crosswind Regenerative Air Sweeper, including the regen process of the Tier 4 auxiliary engine. Before operating this machine, there are a few daily checkpoints to go over. Let's take a walk around the machine. Here on the passenger side of the Elgin Crosswind, we have a few points to go over daily. Those are the front sprayers, the side brooms, the rear engine oil dipstick, rear engine antifreeze overflow, the water filter, and the diesel tank. When it comes to the water sprayers, what you want to look at is you want to turn your water on and make sure that you have good flow through each of your nozzles on each side and on the pickup head. If you do have a clogged nozzle on the front, all you would do is pull down on this gray piece and pull down the nozzle and it comes right off the water hose. You can blow that out with shop air or some people like to use a paper clip to clean it out to get proper water flow to keep down on dust and to lubricate the fan of the truck. That brings me to a good point. When operating this truck, water must be used, whether it's the water the truck supplies or whether it's rainwater that's already on the ground. If water is not used on this truck at all, it will cause premature wear of the fan. When looking at your side brooms, the main thing you want to look at is to make sure that you have at least six and a half inches of broom left using the broomstick Elgin provides with the truck. Next, we have the water filter. To clean that, the first step is to put this water valve into the off position, which is the position it's in now. Unscrew your water filter canister. Remove the filter and wash it out with a clean water source. Also, there's an O-ring in this canister. Make sure that's intact also. Install it back on the housing. And turn your water back on. One of the fluid checks on this machine is to make sure that you see at least half of this sight glass filled with antifreeze. One of the daily fluid checks on the rear engine is the oil. One of the main focus points when washing down the crosswind daily is the pickup head. What you want to do is take the intake hose clamp off, slide the intake hose to the side, and clean the pickup head out with high pressured water. This will give you optimal cleaning power with a clean pickup head. Here on the driver's side of the machine, we have a few more daily checks to go over, starting with the impeller bearings. These are the two high-speed bearings on the truck. As you can see, there's yellow caps showing you the Zerk fittings, where to put the grease in at. You wanna grease these bearings every eight hours or every day after the shift. Make sure that when you're greasing the bearings, you use the specific grease type on this sticker or something equivalent to it. Moving over to the hydraulic tank, you wanna check that daily as well. Make sure that you have it to the right full on the sight glass, and you wanna check that when all of the hydraulic cylinders are retracted and the hopper down. Here's another good tip. At the end of every shift, Remember to turn off the rear battery disconnect switch because you cannot jumpstart the rear engine battery. Once you remove the battery tray, the first battery closest to you is the one that starts the rear engine. You can never jumpstart this battery. If this battery does go dead, you have to remove the leads and charge the battery. Once the battery is charged, reconnect the leads and then start the, the truck. Higher up on the crosswind, we have two more things that need to be checked and cleaned daily. Starting off with our impeller belt. What that does is it transfers the power from the engine to the impeller and gives you all the vacuum power for sweeping. What you need to do daily is wash the surface between the belt and the pulleys so that you don't have premature belt wear. Also, when you're sweeping, 
listen for any squealing noises. If you do hear the belt squealing, contact us at BPWE so we can come and tighten it for you. Moving on to the rear engine air filter, you remove the cover by pulling this yellow tab, turning the cover counterclockwise, removing the outer and inner air filters, and tap these out lightly on the ground to clean them. Never blow them out with air. If they aren't cleaned out enough by tapping them on the ground, then contact us at BPWE so we can send you new ones. Here on the bottom of the crosswind, over top of the pickup head, we have our air tanks. We need to make sure that we drain these daily to remove the moisture out of the air tanks. Removing the moisture will keep from damaging air valves that are used with sweeping components daily. How we drain the moisture out of the air tanks is by pulling these cables located on either side over top of the pickup head, and that will drain the moisture out of the air tanks. Lastly, we want to keep in mind when we're out on our sweeping routes not to ever exceed a 10 mile an hour sweeping speed. If you do exceed 10 miles an hour, you will prematurely wear out sweeping parts, such as this dirt shoe. You can see that the paint is peeled off of it. This is an early sign of a prematurely worn dirt shoe. There are controls on the inside of the truck for the hopper. There are also exterior controls on the passenger side. These are a more safer way to dump the hopper so you can see overhead obstructions when dumping. When it comes time to dump the hopper, here's how to do it safely. First, open up the rear door. Whenever your rear door is open, it is very important to make sure that your safety prop is in place. Now that we have the rear door open, we can raise the hopper into dump position. Now that we've dumped the debris out of our hopper, it is very important to talk about the daily washdown and how to clean the hopper out. There are two very important things that need to be added to the daily washdown process. The first thing being the dirt screens. To pull down the dirt screens, you pull the black tab away from you and pull the gray handle towards you. After you've dropped the dirt screen down, wash it out with a high pressure water hose and also wash out the air passage in the top of the hopper. The second thing that you need to wash out would be your dust boxes. With these two things being clean, you will be ensured to have optimal sweeping power and also you won't have carryover, which will prematurely wear your fan out. To enable the wandering hose, first start the rear engine and put the sweeper in sweep mode. Next, come around to the back of the truck and turn the wandering hose switch on so that the orange light illuminates. When you're done using the wandering hose, be sure to turn the wandering hose switch off so that the sweep functions will be operable. That does it for the walk around of the Elgin Crosswind. Let's go in the cab and see how it operates. Here on the inside of the Elgin Crosswind, we're gonna start off by explaining some of the chassis controls. The first switch, is your headlight and parking light switch. If you flip it all the way forward, you get headlights. Back is parking lights. The next is very important. That is your axle shift. The high range when the red light is on is for highway. And whenever you're about to sweep, you put the sweeper in neutral with your parking brake on and flip it down. That puts it into low range. And make sure when you flip the switch, you have plenty of air in the tanks. The next switch that is important is the right and left hand steer switch. Before you switch the right and left hand steer, make sure the sweeper is completely stopped, put it in neutral with the parking brake on, and you can switch to right hand steer. 
Now on to the rear engine control panel, starting off with the ignition switch. You have your throttle control, your sweep and transport mode, which if you see right when you turn the key on, it's in transport. None of the other sweep functions such as left or side room rotate or pick up head down will work until you flip the button to sweep mode. Then you can see the broom light comes on. Next, we have our tachometer, which has our left and right broom side tilt degrees. We have our hours. We have a fuel level gauge, which needs to be disregarded. Use the fuel level gauge on the chassis dash panel. Next, we have our oil pressure, our voltmeter, and our engine temperature. The next thing is the water level gauge. It's pretty simple. It goes from empty to a third, then two thirds, then all the way full. Next, you have a light that shows if your hopper's up. So our hopper is up right now. That's the hopper up light. And this is our light showing that the door is open. Now, farther down in the control panel, we have our left side broom rotate, our right side broom rotate, our right side broom tilt, and our left side broom tilt. We have our hopper controls, hopper up and down, hopper door open and close. We have our pickup head down, which is just simply clicking it and the pickup head rides where it needs to. We have our water switch, low in the middle, highs all the way forward. We have our PTO switch, which you can use if you need to dump and you don't want to start the rear engine, you would turn your ignition on, don't start the engine, pull this orange tab back, flip the PTO switch all the way forward, put your sweeper in sweep mode. With the chassis engine running, you can lift the hopper and open the door to dump the debris without starting the rear engine. Always remember to cut the PTO switch off when not in use and before driving. The next thing, we have our beacon light switch. Our next row of switches are our work lights for working at night. So we have our left side broom, our rear lights, and our right side broom lights. Next, we have our down pressure knobs. Turned all the way to the right, gives us a lighter broom pattern. Turned to the left is a heavier broom pattern. Of course, this is our right side broom down pressure and our left side broom down pressure. And all that we're wanting is for the brooms to barely contact the ground, just enough to pick up the debris and flick it towards the middle of the truck where they can get sucked up by the pickup head. On the tier four auxiliary engine on the Elgin Crosswind, a regen is required. When the regen light is illuminated on the rear engine control panel, a regen must be performed as soon as possible. If this light is ignored more than three times, a John Deere service technician will have to come out and clean the DEF system manually. This will, of course, result in downtime. The first step to this process is lowering the pickup head and turning the rear engine off. Next, you take the clamp off of the intake side of the hose, slide the hose away from the pickup head, Using the block off plate provided with the truck, put that in the pickup head. Set the hose up over top of your block off plate. And install the clamp, securing the, pick, the pickup hose. Now, the second step of the regen process on the Elgin Crosswind takes place in the rear engine control panel. I'm gonna start off by saying, before the regen can be performed, you must have the hopper down. Now, the M button is to exit and the T button is to toggle. You start off this process by starting the rear engine, holding down the M button for three seconds, then a list will come up. Use the T button to toggle to number 10 which is labeled force regen. Tap M and T, 
Then it says force regen. You use T to toggle from no to yes. And then you hit M. And it'll ask you confirm force regen. You would hit T to toggle. And then you'd hit M. And then the regen process would start. Keep in mind that the exhaust temperatures get very high and you want to make sure the exhaust is clear of any leaves or debris that might be stuck in there from sweeping. And also keep in mind that this process can take anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. That's all for the operator's training on the Elgin Crosswind. If you have any questions, call us at BPWE Rents at 800-868-8485.